welcome to a painting tutorial. Um, tonight I'm going to be painting this Tyranny Warrior, um, one of a set of three I've got. And these two friends, I'll be painting them at the same time but off camera. Uh, colours for this guy are going to match the rest of my high fleet. I'm just going to reverse the way we do the paints from the Gene Steelers I've been showing off recently. So my main colours are GW's Killing Green, that'll be all on these hard plates at the back, all the way down here, all of these on his leg plates, anywhere that's a one of the solid carapace plates. Uh, we'll be using Skeleton Horde for all of his body, so all the chest piece here, all of the arm, uh, kind of chin tin, chin tin, um, and the kind of body parts. We've got Gullum and Flesh, uh, any fleshy bits, so the weapon and the, all these little bits between the armour segments and finally some Black Templar which will be for mainly for the swords um, I think probably the spikes here and those hooves that's going to be about it so I'm going to crack on with this guy and I'll be back in a minute once the first colours on I'm going to start with Skeleton Horde So just to get the paint on relatively thickly, get into all the cracks, a nice deep shade. This is going to get highlighted up in part two. Well, it's not with part two, it's going to be part of this video. And just slap it on all over. Again, it doesn't matter to an extent how neat we are because there's plenty of time to clean up and because I'm going to be re-highlighting them. If we go over a little bit any of the other plates uh, we can just do a bit of the base coat again. Um, in this case it's Wraithbone. I'll just clean it up. So just carry on like that all over the rest of the miniature. Um, I'll speed this up a little bit and I'll join you at the end of it once it's all done. But there we go, so that's the first coat on. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect, you may notice I stuffed the tail up somewhere halfway down here. Um, but being that this is going to get highlighted a couple of times anyway, that's, not, that's going to get covered up quite rapidly. It's mainly I use contrast for uh, base coat and shading. Um, base coat on these is obviously kind of bony colour. So I'm going to put this guy to one side, uh, let him dry off, and we'll come back in a moment for the second colour. All right. Cheers for that. Now the bone's dry, we're going to hit all the armour plates with some GW Kelly and Green. Uh, give it a little shake. And again, just a nice decent coat all over him. Make sure you're covering it and then all the edges of the plates. So simply like that, so I'll um, do his back plates here, plates across the top of his gun, plates on either side of his leg, and the plates down at his back of his tail here. So we'll speed through this and I'll see you on the other side when I finished it. And there we are with all of the blue done. All around and I'll pop this guy aside to dry off a little bit. And I'll back again for the next colour which will be the black. And on to Contrast Black Templar. This is going to be for all of the bone swords, hooves and uh, generally spiky bony bits on this guy. So again, nice thick coats all over it. Try and get it covered in one go. And we'll fast forward through this bit. And I'll see you when it's done. Right, that looks like that's it. So um got all the back done. This just needs to dry out. Just check the camera. That's a reflection. Um Give this guy dry out. I'm going to do the um, skin next. What I do need to do first is do a bit of clean up around all these um, soft joints. I'm going to do some clean up on these piping here um, and any other bits of skin where I've just splashed over a little bit. So I'll do that off camera and then I'll be back in a minute to. And we're on to the final contrast paint. Um, I, offline, I did a little bit of cleaning up nearly all the soft joints here, 
back slides, uh, the fence down the side, just all this are white, just a little bit of clean up just to tidy up where I splashed over. Uh, before I do the flesh, uh, we're using contrast colour and flesh for this next section. And just as before, we want to try and get it nice and thickly in all the areas we've just painted white again. And get it all over the place. Uh, switch to a slightly thinner brush this time as well than the uh, bigger starter brush I was using for the base coats. And um, just because some of these areas are a little thinner, I want to make sure I don't make too much of a mess around about the sides. And then once this is done, we are basically home free. So there we are, that's the flesh done. It all obviously needs to dry. And as I said before, if you're a kind of new gamer, a uh, new painter rather, or um, you're just trying to speed paint through an army really quickly, you could theoretically leave them like that. That's contrast painted. It's got some shading, doesn't look awful. Bit of basing material on the base. Give the side some colour and you can pretty much call that finished. I'm going to come back in a minute once this guy's dry and start highlighting up all the colours we've potted on these and um, giving it a few washes and shades and stuff to make it a little pop out a little bit more and give some variation, especially around all these pipes and guns, some purples, some reds, some greens, stuff like that. We'll throw that in, pick out the teeth, all that sort of stuff. So, pop this out to one side, I'll be back in a moment. Now this guy's dried off a little bit, we're going to add some highlights to him. Uh, we'll start with glue. Start back. <coughs> um, I'm going to use Temple Guard blue for the first highlight, and then some Baharoth blue for the second. Just two highlights on this, doesn't need to be overly complicated. A shake. There we go. I'll start the front actually. So with the carapace, we want it to highlight from the edges. Just around and I'm just going to drag the brush towards the edge to give it a nice jagged highlight. doesn't want to be a smooth high highlight like you do on uh, armour or space marines because it is, at the end of the day, bone, even though it's bright blue. So just drag the brush towards the edge or in from the edge, depending on basically what's easiest. I don't really have a massively complex method for this. I'm going to try and highlight the top of it a little bit where the centre is. Like that. And just add a bunch of highlights down there. And there. I'm covering over quite a lot of the contrast blue. really using it as a base coat stroke shade. Uh, as you can see here, I'm trying to leave this panel darker and I just highlight around it. Just trying to follow the shadows that have uh, been created by the contrast paint. I think it's one of the reasons I quite like contrast paint because it essentially tells you exactly where to highlight. So that's pretty much the first coat. I'm going to crack on with this and fast forward the video. I'll do some sort of funky colour screen, not decide quite how it's going to be presented yet. Um, and I'm going to speed through this, the rest of this guy and I'll see you when I've finished all the blue. Right, there we go. That is the first coat of highlighting done on the blue. Uh, as you can see, when I was doing the um, the shoulder plates up here, I've cross hashed it just a little bit, just to give it a bit of variance. I've picked out there's a part here that's got a bit of a scar, so I've pulled that out. But otherwise, it's always been working towards the back. There's a little bit there with a blob of white in it. I'll fix that later. A bit annoying. But it happens sometimes with contrast, it just gets a little bubble in it. Next, we're going to use Baharoth Blue. Give it a bit of a shake. And with exactly the same brush, we're basically going to do the same thing. 
We're just going to go a little thinner each time. So try and get the line a little bit lower down, a little more centrally. Don't go as far up into the model. Try and get some line. The line's a bit thinner. This is an edge paint, so it's a, a little thinner than the regular layer paints. So it makes this a little easier. Just keep it thin on the brush. And just keep high up, basically exactly the same process you've just done for the first one. The thing I'm doing as I go around is I'm just sharpening the edge up because I thought I flicked the paint towards the edges. I do want it to have a relatively sharp edge on it, so I'll just do that around here. I'm going to finish off this side quickly and then I'll give you a bit of a show and then I'll crack on and get the rest of them done. And I'm actually painting two others at the same time, so in between stints of filming, I'm just looking the colours on the uh, the other guy was Des Bitter and the um, uh, da, 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 Venom Cannon dude I've got over just behind broad the same spate stage that this guy is at this is a lovely small batch compared to the Gene Steelers I've just done there's three models I'm so tempted to pick up some more Nid Warriors not really my planned force a thousand points but I've really enjoyed a building them uh, and b painting them they're a dream I like them I always love the look of mid warriors especially with these smaller heads uh, they look pretty damn cool um, my intention always kind of was to have a bigger nid creatures list rather than lots of gaunts and stealers and stuff uh, stealers are just the thing to take especially when you got a brood lord I might start migrating some of the army towards um, mid, uh, Winded Warriors and uh, Venom Thropes and, and that sort of size model instead and then obviously pick up some of the bigger guys. Um, I really do find, quite fancy uh, an Exocrine, Exocrine, whatever you pronounce it. Um, it just looks cool. Um, fancy a Harpy because I don't really have many flyers. I have flyers and marines, I don't have any of the um, Necron flyers and there's no sisters flies yet and I'm not even stuck my sisters together yet uh, there we go, but there we go, that's um, it's coming out a little more of a contrast on the uh, on the camera than it is in real life the definition is a little softer but across the table that looks pretty damned awesome we're just going to carry on that over the rest of the model now, get the head and all the other bits done and I'll be back uh, in a few minutes to show you the finished thing. So there we have it, we've highlighted blue. There it is all the way around. That was pretty quick. Um, the actual clock says 30 minutes, basically bang on to finish that. Uh, in your world that'll have been a lot quicker. So I'm going to crack on with the other two. Uh, so I'm gonna just a little bit further behind, just got to do the blue on these guys. So I can highlight the blue. And then um, I'll start doing the bone and then the skin and then do the black last of all because it's the detail and stuff and then all the teeth and little detail bits. So I will see you again soon. Right, we're back for the next stage of uh, this guy. We're going to do the bone. I've got some screaming skull and some white scar to do the bone with. And we're literally going to start picking out some of the high areas, highlighting them up, just two highlights, nice and quick. Uh, and I'll get the bone to where I want it to be, so I'm going to get cracking. I've found that the bone is pretty easy to highlight fairly roughly, you don't need to be that neat. Just get a highlight on all the higher areas. Really easy with contrast paint. I'll move this around a little bit, because it pretty much tells you where to highlight. Just follow the contours nice and quick. And as it dries, it blends quite nicely. This takes quite a while. I reckon it'll take probably half an hour or so to do this guy. I've already done his two buddies. 
for now and it's quite easy it's quite relaxing actually because i can get to most of the bone on this and um, because it's a light color it's fairly easy to get over everywhere and just tidy up any cock-ups made um, screaming skull, skull goes over other colors like the uh, skin color here really easily good coverage and reasonably good opaqueness but that's uh you can see it comes with highlight comes across quite easily without any sort of blending against um skeleton hood so we're just going to do that all over this guy and before we add some white to it so i will as before speed this forward a bit and get on with the rest of the model and there we have it that's the first coat of bone done all the way around so he's just started to highlight up really nicely there and i'm gonna take a short break and i'll be back to do the white see you in a minute and we're back for the second highlight on the bone color we're going to be using some white scar layer paint on this just a little bit around all the edges and give it a good shake because white scar is a bit of a paint it thickens and separates quite often that's not too bad pop that there right <coughs> so all we're going to do here is just pick out the edges and the highest points as quick as we can and I may swap to a slightly finer brush in parts for this depends what I'm doing with this larger one so there you go, that's the kind of chest bone highlighted Oops, some paint down here just a little bit There we go. <coughs> it does look a little sharper on camera than it does in real life. That's just the way that I've got this area really, really well lit. I'll, uh, someday I'll, uh, I'll snap a photo of what my painting is like. Just to give you an idea. But that's all you do. So I'm going to crack on with this guy, get that done in the rest of the body, and show you the result in just a few minutes. Right then, there we go. That's the white done on all the bone section of the skin. I'll just show you a comparison. So we're taking them from that to that. They're getting pretty close now. I've just about got time to do the um, skin on the, the weapon here. Hey, if you give me a minute. I can't see the paint I need, of course. There it is. So the skin is going to be highlighted with a bit of Kessel of Hesh. Now I'm definitely going to do the gun. I'll probably do the bits that come over his claws here and knees, but I'm going to leave pretty much all the other skin coloured bits as they are um, because they're going to get some washes in um, in a bit just to show them out. Um, some greens, some reds, some purples. Um, and they don't really need it much more, they're, they're just in the cracks here. They're, they're only there to really to give a bit of variance in the colour scheme. So all we're going to do, and unfortunately I've not found a better colour for this yet. It doesn't quite match. Um, so I've been using um, Gullum and Flesh and I've not quite found something as pink. This is a little more yellow as Kissed on Flesh. It works well enough, but it's not quite where I want it to be. I've also found I've not got a highlight for Kissed Love. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. I'll have to go and check on the GW app at some point. But I'll have to mix my own wash for it, uh, my own highlight for it later. I'm just going to whip across this really quickly. Get this 
can't. Again, just use the contours that the contrast paint has highlighted for you. Really simple. And quick and easy. Again, like the skin, I'm, I'm working down the weapon, trying to keep all the lines in the same direction. Um, as I often do on this, and you'll see uh, if I turn the miniature so much when I'm painting, I almost always paint towards myself. I find it just ensures I get a cleaner line in painting. Just a quick highlight all over it, give it a bit of colour. Um, and I'm going to do the back side of the weapon and other bits just quickly now, and I'll be back in a minute with the finished result. Okay, we're going to do the second highlight on the skin. I've pre mixed a pretty much a 50 50 mix of white scar and um, a piece of flesh. Well, I am actually going to thin this down a little bit, not everything I said earlier. Sometimes thin paints down is useful. So just as with the rest, we're just going to touch around the edges very, very quickly. Just to give this a bit more definition. We chuck some washes at it in a minute. The other side as well, so I'm not describing anything here at all. Give me a bit of weight. My brain's wandering off a little bit. I'm going to try and get this dye done tonight if I can. There we go, that's the uh, skin done. Just a quick a couple of highlights on that. Um, I'm going to do the bone swords next. For that, we're going to use these two. Dark Reaper, first of all, just a broad covering of it, and then some Thunder Hot Blue. This is going to go on all. Oh, I've just got to do one. Just... I know it's when I was painting earlier, I completely missed a thumb off. I'm just going to uh, have it on black that quickly. Right, and so now I'm going to uh, Dark Reaper this, so just going to paint the brush and just pick up all, all the high points again. Should still a bit, oh, it's just, I can always. Yeah, this is probably the bit I'm most concerned about it because we have done this uh, on the claws on the gene stealers. Not really sure how it's going to turn out on some of these bigger weapons, so we'll just take it as we find it. So there we go, that's the first um, highlight on the bone, on the, not bone, the black bone swords and the hooves and stuff. And then we're going to move on to Thunderhawk Blue. Exactly the same again, we're just going to highlight it up quickly. 
in the edges wherever we can. Just keep it nice and neat. Yeah, just like that. So it's a really subtle highlight, just a bit of edging around it. Nothing too bright either. Um, I made a decision when I was doing the Gene Steelers that this was not going to be a really sharp edge high hi highlight. It just wants to be a subtle black to mid blue, grey blue. Um, helps break up the model and I don't think it really needs a really sharp highlight. I'm kind of undecided. I might give up, go back over the whole army at some point, but I think for what I'm doing now, I'm more than happy with this. It's being as far as it goes. There we go, both sides of that one done. Just do this one quickly as well. So there we are with the black done. I'm going to do a quick few washes and pick out the teeth. And that's basically this guy done. So teeth, we use palette with rich flesh. Very, very quickly, just pick them out individually. I've always been a fan of Palovich. I find it's a, a really nice just off white. So it makes things look sharp without making them quite so stark. The only difference between this, these guys and some of the kind of monstrous creatures, um, where they've got bigger teeth. Uh, so the Broodlord I did this way. I did a Bone first, then Pallid Witch. Just to give it some kind of highlights, but for this guy, that'll do. Come across the board, it'll look fine. Simple as that. Next, we're going to start adding some colours, especially around the weapon where we've got loads of tubes and pipes and stuff. So, I'm going to start with some Way Watcher Green. This will really come into play mainly on the Venom Cannon, but I'm just going to give that. A little wash over these pipes down here. It's very subtle. Put that in there. Just to give it some different colour in there. Yeah, just down there like that. Bring it on this side as well. Yeah. Just realised I'm not in the middle of the camera, sorry. There we go. So, greenish slime. That's all I'm going to do on there, nothing more than that. Just give it a little flavour. I'll oh, swing over to my, my favourite shade in the world, Caribou Crimson. Now, I'm going to do quite a lot of Caribou Crimson on here. So, for starters, the weapon, we're going to pick out some of the slots where it meets the other things. So, where he's sticking his fingers inside of it, we're going to eventually just splash over the giant's work. Now, you want to work this in just a little bit, so have a little bit of water or something to hand to just smooth that out a little bit. Um, we're going to pull this out, this. Um, Ribbed area here, just chuck the caribou across it, all the way down it, and then just down this area here. And on the legs, 
Put it around here. Just going to drop it in the backs of these, anywhere with the crevice, so just down there, and a little bit up here. If you smash it over, you just literally just flick it off with your finger. It's just going to deepen up this flash a little bit because it's a little bit flat still. You know, I've done a couple of quick highlights on most of it. Same on the back of the gun, all the way along here. So quickly, a little bit down there. And these vents at the back. You're not ever going to see this really, so to worry about that. And then wherever these are along here. Tap it down a little bit. And then you've got to find all the tiny little vents all across them. Just a little dab in it. Just primes it up just a little bit. Gives it a bit more depth and warmth. I think doing shades is probably my favourite part of any model. You can so radically transform what you've done in a very short space of time just by slapping a few different colour variants on it. Let's go back over this bit again, deepen it up a little bit. Let's get nice and red. The weapon, plenty of gribbly vibe. Also helps cover up some of these spots where I've strange enough after three or four coats of paint still managed to miss them. Okay, the end a bit of a red vibe as well. Spot anywhere else I've missed. I've tried not to do it too much on the bone on this guy. Just left it to the fence everywhere. There we go, just muck that up a bit, give it some slight pinkishness. And next, up we're going to do my other favourite purple colour, and my other favourite wash. We're going to add a little bit of violet to the areas we've just done. I'm going to stick this mainly on the weapon. I don't think I'm going to bother doing any of the other bits of him. Mainly as I just want the weapon. Oh. This just does the same thing as the red does it, but it just deepens it a little bit more. Makes it a little bit more sickly. So I just do this at the very furthest back point. Now on some of the smaller models, I'm not going over the vents again. I've just left them as they were. Because this one's quite big, I'm just going to drop a little bit in. Very corners. Leg joints. Just to deepen that shading up just a little bit. As quick and simple as possible. Right, 
Batman. And there we are, one finished Terrier Warrior. Pretty chuffed at how he's come out. Looking pretty mean. I need to take the other two. I've got up to this level now, so they're a bit further behind, but I'll finish them off tomorrow night. But for this video, this guy's done, and I'll get a few stills of the whole squad uh, when they're all done. Uh, obviously the base is due, and um, that's just... Um, uh, da, 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 I completely forgot what it was. Still in mud. Still in mud and some gravel. Uh, and a couple of licks of paint over it, but for tonight, that's me done. So thank you very much for joining us. Cheers and goodbye.